All right, welcome back. And yes, we are on to uh, the second part of the show where we'll be talking about the interest rates, the uh, monetary policy rate that the CBN has increased right now. It's been increased to uh, 18%. All right. Well, I have with me in the studio Dr. Marcel Mbamalu. Good morning to you, doctor. Good morning. Welcome. Now, nice let's, let's look at um, the monetary policy rate, the increase. We have seen a continuous rise from April uh, 2022. It has risen from 11.50%, now 18%. Actually, the sixth time. The sixth in, time. In six months, actually. Uh, Why? Yeah, yeah. Six months? More than six months, it's but it's six times, six actually, months, yeah. yes. Less than a year. And, um, yeah, I think, um, well, expectedly, um, right now, you could see globally, central banks are actually trying to tighten liquidity. Okay. Uh, and um, that's what you do when, there's, when there seems to be excessive uh, money supply in the economy. Uh, you know, and, um, especially for Nigeria in an election year, you expect that a lot of money to be spent, a lot of um, uh, liquidity, Politicians would like to move money around, you know, and all of those. So you expect that. But given the the, the, the recent policy of the CBN um, in terms of um, 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 in tightening liquidity, for example, not just tightening liquidity, what the CBN did in redesign, narrow redesign policy mm -hmm. was a kind of mopping up um, what it thought was money excessive circulation. money circulation and all of those. So, and then already, um, of course, I we need to draw a line between that money outside the banking system like it said and the actual money supply because the money supply could doesn't just really mean the tangible money the quantity of money that you see there are some intangible of course money you create money you do a lot of um, uh, things so so based on that so that's why economics are saying that it may have been uncalled for, even though there is need to tighten liquidity because of expenditure and all of the expenses, um, liquidity in the system. But it's, it may have been uncalled for because already the system is already a tight. CRR it's is almost 30%, mm. you know? The cash uh, ratio, the banks, the deposits, the amount of deposits the banks keep with the CBN, which means that it's not all the deposits that the banks have that they have at their disposal to actually lend out. Mm. Because the core mandate of banks is to lend out money to, and then make money from, make money from that. Process. So, but there are already measures put in place, which uh, look to some economies as being uh, a kind of um, an overkill. You know, 30 percent of I think 30 or 32 percent of CRR, you know, is already a tightening measure. Now, enough. how how does this? How will this affect uh, uh, the 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 people going forward, especially people who do business, mm. people who borrow money? Uh, how will this affect them? Now, also, I would like for you to marry this. Mm. Those that have collected loans already, mm. will it affect them? Yep, mm. of course. Oh, it will. It will. Of course, at the point of collecting loans, um, you're already told, you know, when you send loans. Once the interest rate changes, of course, the next thing is for your bank, is, unless it's fixed rate. Even if, even if you're halfway yeah. done? Yes, of course. Even the, the money is that Nigeria borrow, unless it's a fixed rate. You know, if it's not fixed rate, uh, of course, they will let you know that the rates have changed. And once rates change, of course, it has to be varied again. So it means that cost of money generally is high. Even if you had borrowed money um, before now, of course, it has to be reviewed. That means the, 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 the interest rates that you pay on the loan that you have taken would have increased. So what does this mean? It means that the cost of goods and services, as I said earlier, once the cost of funds rises, cost of goods and services rise. And then it means that, of course, inflation will. But what the CBN was actually trying to do was to reduce, uh, to tackle <laughs> <laughs> tackle inflation, and, you know. So it's actually antithetical. It's actually antithetical. So it means that there should have been. Um, economists uh, don't really believe that this recent action, based on the challenges that we have right exactly. now, exactly, you know, especially now that we are we are having to buy. Yeah. So unless there are some other money. data, uh, not at our disposal, CBM may have had MPC rather would have had uh, reasons for what it's doing, but it's something what that they voted for for this. They voted for it. Yeah, 10. I think 10. 10 um, out of, yes. Yes, uh, you know, uh, 10 out of, um, is it 12 or 11 also or something? About that number. So, yeah. So, 
and um, they voted for it. Uh, of course, uh, could be these are all human beings. They also read the body language of what the CBN wants to do. Of course, when you say MPC, you can't really divorce MPC from CBN, even though it's a, a bigger um, umbrella. But it's all about what the CBN actually wants to do. You don't just come for a meeting. Of course, before the meeting, there should have been uh, uh, consultations, briefs of mm -hmm. this is the reason, what these are the areas, this is the agenda and the rest. So I think they may have their reason. And the coming days, we will see um, further explanations as to why. While we wait to see um, why why this policy has been implemented at this time, which of course we know it's, is, is not an appropriate time, going yep. by the things that uh, the Nigerians are experiencing. Yep. There's no cash. Yes. There is what we call a cash crunch. There is no fuel. You, you need to buy money to buy other yeah, things exactly. with, with the money that you have. You know, it's, it's, it, it doesn't seem like a good time. And we are waiting to see, while we wait to see, how, how bad will this gonna be. impact on the common man? Yeah, of course, the common man is the final um, um, uh, victim, or rather, I think that's the hard, Unfortunately, hard one, so. recipient of, of whatever you do. Policies like this. On, on, on that uh, realm, in that realm. So, um, what happens is that, okay, let me simplify it the way we we'll, um, we'll understand it, the way I do understand it. Um, for example, uh, you go to, you're a manufacturer, you, you make uh, biscuits. Okay, for example, you manufacture biscuits and then um, you need money to do, you don't use your, the money you keep in your bedroom to do that. You get to the bank, the bank gives you a loan, you may have borrowed the money before now or you are just borrowing after yesterday's uh, announcement by the MPC, you know, and then you get to the bank, uh, you get the loan, you put it in your business to manufacture things. That's higher cost because you're going to pay on that money. Okay, that money, there's an additional money you're going to pay on that loan that you have taken. You've taken like 1 million, for example, and then you are going to pay like 30% of that 1 million, which is about 300,000. So you borrowed, uh, uh, I say 30%, it's an NPR is the guide. Okay. The 18% is the guide, CBN is given. So it's, a, it's an idea to the banks that, okay, you can't do below 18%. Okay. But banks do much more than 18%. 18%. So what it means, the 18% is just like, so normally in an ideal situation, you have a, a situation whereby you have maybe uh, 20%. So it means that it cannot be, it's already two, double digit. So it can't be less than 20% for banks. But banks do 28, 30%, even 30 something. Well, this is even coming at so, a time, sorry, go on. Go, yeah. go on. So by the end of the day, you get the money at 1.3 million. It's 1 million actually that the bank gives you, but you're going to pay back the bank 1.3 million. So you are not looking at the money as one million. So you, that's one million cost, 1.3 million that you have put in that business. And then you're still gonna make profit. So how much do you think you're gonna make on that money? Remember, you're gonna pay salaries, you're gonna pay staff, you're gonna pay, do things, mm. other things. So, and you're gonna make profit. You pay your shareholders some dividend by the end of the year. So what does that mean? It means that whatever cost you're gonna, whatever you're gonna, the price, the unit price of whatever you're gonna, that biscuit that you're gonna produce, mm -hmm. It has to factor in the cost of the yeah, fund that you borrowed to do that. So the man buying biscuit there <clears throat> pays, if the biscuit was 10 naira, for example, it's not going to be 10 naira anymore. It could be 15 naira. Okay? It could be 15 naira. And then the transporter, the man knows he pays, he buys biscuit for 15 naira. The, trans the driver who drives, the keke drive, keke marawa driver who uh, takes you to work knows that he's going to pay to buy biscuit for his children is now 15 naira. So he doesn't want to charge, charge you 100 naira anymore. So the, we, we will see, we'll so see price of every other everything thing going up automatically. And trust Nigerians for that. Once the price is not always commensurate, the price increase at the down, in the downstream is not always commensurate what, with what you get upstream. Upstream in the sense like what the money, the payment you make to the banks for the loans that you take, the cost of things you buy, uh, for your, the raw materials that you buy, you need sometimes to double it. So what is the so, bank payment ratio? What is, is there a benchmark for it? For bank payment? Ratio, yes. Uh, what do you mean by that? In terms of payment as per loan repayment or? Loan repayment. Yeah, ratio as to what? Annual, the annual uh, ratio. Well, I, I, if I understand what you mean there, the interest rate, if you take loan from a bank... When you take a loan, yes. From a bank. Take a loan. Is that, is that, is that okay. a benchmark? Is that a benchmark 
for the when you take a loan and you okay. want to repay mm. is there a benchmark that uh, that you have to pay yeah that's if it's talking if you're talking about the interest they're going to pay on that of course there's the bank you there's, it has to be like the bank okay. will tell at the point of collecting loan the bank will tell you how much you're going to pay for that particular and it's not just you're not going to pay it at once of course oh. you're going to pay based on um it's normally it's monthly for example mm, of for the, some of us spread who, over time yeah spread over time for some of us who um uh, but the moment you pay off your loan if you want to pay off the loan at once then the interest um the interest with it. the more you delay you roll over your loans remember those <coughs> interest that you pay on loan is also uh, gets incremental to an, to an extent mm -hmm. when you don't repay for example if the loan is supposed to have been paid over a period of one year the interest that 30 percent is spread over a year mm -hmm. and then you happen to, the loan happens to exceed that and you roll over. of course there is an incremental um what you call like a penalty on that so that is not factored in here, but the, the, the rate at which you repay your loan is determined at the point of taking, and it's not uh, uniform in banks. Okay, okay. it's okay. not uniform. Yeah. Now the, we we also see this coming at a time where um, there is a call for increase in VAT. Mm. Well, the tax. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't know. I'm just seven. I'm, VAT is seven point five percent. Seven point five percent. Yeah, right. It was five for percent. Be, you know, increase to 10%. Yes, and um, that's, been, that's been back and forth on that. And, um, you know, I think one of the uh, uh, low sides of the current uh, is doing tries in certain areas, but one of the low sides of the, this government is uh, in the area of uh, tax. I think because of the, I want to use the crunch, the cash crunch, the federal government is experiencing. Mm. In the, so at the, at, at the fiscal side, it's trying so much because oil revenue has just um, not been coming. So government is looking to ways to make more money, to raise more uh, money, and that's tax. Looking here and there to, you know. But I think it's, it shouldn't just be in the area of um, of increasing tax. And I think the only thing government could have, should have done would have been to increase the tax net. Okay. A whole lot of people haven't really... Uh, been paying tax haven't really been uh, netted in if you like you know so uh, so that's plugging those holes those gaps could bring in more money for government that is looking for because dwindling oil revenue means that they need more money so, so they borrow they try to increase tax they here and there but a lot more people tax net, yes a whole lot of people there are a whole lot of people because we do you can bring it to the tax of, net. Of, um, really wealthy people don't even pay tax exactly so in the u.s what do they do sometimes they find a way to say um, um, they find a way to create some special tax for some luxury goods. Okay. You don't, when you say VAT, for example, I have the opinion, in fact, I am one of the people that believe that VAT is, um, is actually 7.5% uh, VAT, VAT is too much because it affects the common man. Because the common man buys bottled water, pays VAT on it. Mm. He buys this. Bottle. So if you could create, there's some areas like the US does, you see, luxury tax. Those who fly private jets, those who do okay. that, and all of those who buy uh, jewelry, uh, uh, what the how many carat gold of jewelry, and all of those, you pay special VAT on that. You get the point. Yeah. So that way you can have more money. That's what I meant when I said increasing the tax net okay. rather than just whatever, creating new layers of tax, sorry, mm -hmm. new um, increments for tax, you know, that will affect the common man. So I believe that. Um, I believe that it's uncalled for increase at this that would be an increase in the in uh, maybe a second increase in two years less than two years less than two years yes less than two years if, if not a year okay well, sure, because it's just recently that tax and then we saw bread to, bread prices so go up and then that time. this policy coming when you're tightening that's a fiscal policy not really aligning uh, i think at, at prime business africa we held a, um, a twitter space yesterday about this uh, in, in increase in um, interest rate and um, you know we talked with Muda Yusuf we talked with um, some economists and all of, and one of the things that came out from that uh, meeting is that we shouldn't um, really uh, be that we should be aligning that the monetary policy and fiscal policy should be aligned that what we have seen over time is that the monetary policy does not align with the fiscal policy. So why government is going this way, increasing tax and doing that, CBN is doing the other way, going the other way and all of those. But I think that a better aligned monetary and fiscal policy 
would address some of these concerns. For example, why do we have to in, in, increase tax VAT? Okay, mm -hmm. when already cost of funds, where already the monetary policy, uh, uh, um, monetary policy of the CBN has already increased lending rate, for example. Okay, mm -hmm. so you are creating it's just like a, 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 a double whammy. Okay, you're creating a, a, a double jeopardy in the sense that cost of fund rising and then cost of goods and services on the, on the, on the, on the, down, on the downstream rising at, at the same time. So you're creating a complicated uh, situation, a complicated crunch, if you like. So I think uh, it's not necessary now to even be talking about increasing tax VAT further. Mm. All right, increasing tax and VAT further. Uh, well, I think... Uh it's uh nigerians will have to bear the brunt of this uh, the common man will have to bear the brunt of this. unfortunately so uh, unfortunately and you know what they say when two elephants fight it's the grass that suffers uh we'll see how this plays out and also we're looking at the removal of subsidy <laughs> now let's let's delve into that mm. that that angle mm. the removal of subsidy what do you see do you see the feasibility in it and uh how would that really benefit Nigerians? Yeah, I will shock you, uh, my opinion, if you know that. I think uh, the hardship is much and all that, but I still think that subsidies Can it be go. successfully removed? Yeah, it's just the, 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 the political will. If you have a okay. government that has a political will, I don't think um, the current government has handled this um, well, the subsidy thing. Why coming in, they said, okay, we are going to remove subsidy that they came in. They didn't notice. In fact, they came in. They said there was no subsidy before. Before they came in, there was no subsidy. <laughs> and it was all a political uh, ploy. And they, they came in. They, we realized that there is subs there was subsidy, and there is subsidy subsidy in quote because if it's a whole lot of discussion, we start talking about that subsidy. Who is subsidizing who? What is being subsidized? How much fuel uh, liters of fuel do we? How many liters of fuel do we consume? How mo how many liters of fuel do we pay subsidy for? Allegedly, oh sorry. Mm -hmm. um, uh, reportedly and all of those so it's the whole kettle of fish if you start discussing that but um, I think on the whole that there is no need or rather there's little need to s s keep the subsidy it's gonna affect okay. us but it's already affecting us with the subsidy not being removed so what we have done is to say the, the dilly dally on the removal of subsidy has created another layer of problem in the sense that okay just say subsidy will be removed tomorrow for example let me describe it this mm -hmm. way subsidy will be removed next week and see the reaction it hasn't been removed but see the reaction you have on filling stations and everybody also people will start buying and, becomes, and, yes, and price will go will go high and by the end of the day if you finally even if you don't remove that strat, uh, sorry the, uh, remove the the, 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 subsidy, the subsidy next prices week, don't really come down it, it, even if it comes down, down it comes down by a little i'm just unless like the NNPC and the rest is doing and trying to enforce and trying to do ensure that prices are kept at a normal. So I think we have had enough of this back and forth about okay. something. So outright removal will liberalize the market. Real liberalization, I say, real uh, removal of subsidy means that you open the market, not the way you have NNPC being the sole importer using just appointing who they want and then whatever because that would defeat the essence of liberalization okay. so open the market let anyone who can legitimately import fuel import go ahead and import that's if we need to import how can't we fix our refineries? refineries how can we even produce we have the crude why can't we do it locally we have, here? Uh, the the one just uh, so just built in i'm just too. putting a scenario where we must if we have to import then open the market let uh, Abiodun import. Let OKK import. Let Malam Aminu import. If he can, and if he can legitimately do so, and when they import, there will be price uh, competition. Okay. okay? And price will stabilize, just like we have in the telecom sector today. Mm. You know, before it used to be 50 naira, 50 naira per minute to make a call. Today, is it not, we're talking about seconds, per second. Glow came and brought per second billing, mm. and others followed. Because it's a market competition. Do that in the uh, oil, sp oil, oil space, oil sector. And then we can get the we're getting from the telecom sector. So over time, prices will come down. 
So why is it that pri price cannot be uniform in a situation where you did, uh, where you um, liberalize the market, where you remove subsidy okay. and you know privatize? They said NPC is not a private company, but it's not in spirit and in deed. It's not. So I think that NNPC shouldn't have a business. If you want to compete, let it just be like a government company, a company as it is, competing with the rest. But right now, the licensing is still done at, at, at a regulated mm -hmm. level. So just let everyone import, just like you can import biscuits, import whatever you like. But then there should be a measure of control because of quality. So it doesn't exceed a certain And yeah, quality of quality. what is imported. That's all. That's what government should be doing. And, that, and then price will come down. So, remember the subsidy, I'm not against it. I've always supported it. I've been a business correspondent, a business reporter before I became a, a business editor and then became a news editor and all of those in the newspaper. So, all over, uh, all through those periods, I had special interest in areas of, uh, in, in this uh, sphere of. Um, and you've always discussion. supported the yes. removal of subsidies. Yes. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Marcel Mbamalu. Thank you for coming on VOP this morning. Thank you very much. Good to be here. All right, that's it on the show today. Uh, time for us to go. Uh, VOP this morning makes a return tomorrow. My name is Moses Humphrey, and I have been working with um, Stella Wajiku. Well, we are the team, and we'll be back here tomorrow morning. Have a beautiful day.